We're talking BCPS study strategies, so really trying to give you guys a good background, some ideas of how to uh, prepare uh, for pharmacotherapy certification and really how to pass the exam. Um, I've been through the process. I definitely understand it. Um, it is a very, very challenging exam. So um, got a, a few slides here, some information to, to try to help you guys out and um, maybe, if, maybe allow you to uh, feel a little more comfortable in your uh, studying and preparing process. So I mentioned the huge failure rate. So failure rates have ranged in the, the ballpark of 30 to, to 40%. So pass rates in the 60 to 70% range. And I believe the last few years here, it's, it's closer to that 60% um, percent range. So one in three, maybe a little bit even worse than that, maybe closer to two in five uh, will fail this exam. So that's a uh, pretty substantial um, failure rate for sure. So accept that. Be, be willing to uh, take a chance um, in, in trying to obtain certification and recognize that if you fail the exam, there are lots of other people in your boat. And, and believe me, I've, I've heard from them. Uh, it's a, a challenging thing to, to fail an exam. There's no doubt about that, but um, there is a significant uh, proportion of um, pharmacists that do fail this exam. So put a positive spin on it, you know, taking it a second time. Obviously, you've seen the exam. Now, I, I'm sure they alter it each year and uh, each testing session and so on and so forth. Um, but you've at least got a sense for maybe the, the type of questions, the style, the format, um, and maybe some topic areas that, that you didn't uh, do so well on. Um, I think it's important to remember when, when you're studying, when you're preparing for an exam like this, uh, you're really only making yourself better. And I, I totally remember an example of um, uh, working with a physician, and I got asked a question about warfarin and different ideas to, to get their INR under control, and they you know, weren't a candidate for a, um, a, a DOAC, a direct oral anticoagulant, and they, they wanted to stay on, on warfarin. And, uh, you know, I, I remember studying, relearning, and just the, the fact that sometimes um, giving a patient a consistent dose of, of vitamin K through supplementation is a potential strategy. And I remember learning that um, as I was preparing to, to take the, the BCPS exam. So again, just, you know, you're making yourself better. And, and that's, you know, a good thing. Whether or not you, you, you pass or fail the exam, you know, that, that might be important to employers and things like that. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, making yourself better, learning something new, um, is, is never going to be a, a bad thing. I would encourage you to take it sooner rather than later. Um, there are some stipulations on um, when you can take it. You have to wait a, you know, a, a number of years or do residency. Um, so keep that in mind. But I think the, the fresher you are on clinical topics, um, I, I think probably the easier time you're going to have studying and, and remembering things. So I would suggest taking it uh, sooner rather than later. Look back and, and see um, kind of what your testing history was like. Think about that. Uh, did you do well on, on final exams? And I do think of uh, the BCPS exam as a final type exam. It's comprehensive. There's so many different questions, so many different topics that are covered. Um, if you did well on those, I, on, on final exams uh, in school, um, I, I think you've probably got a pretty good sense of, you know, how to retain knowledge and, and things of, of that nature. Now, if you crammed in pharmacy school a lot, and that's kind of what you relied on, um, you might have a little bit more of a, of a challenge, you know, studying and preparing. And, you know, maybe in that situation, you want to take a little bit longer uh, approach, longer time frame to, to get ready. 
so some strategies that that I think are you know helpful starting earlier um, just to um, uh, not so much in the uh, you know effort or in the recognizing the the time frame but the sooner you start the sooner you touch on topics I think the the better grasp the better handle you'll have on you know do I have a lot of weaknesses what are my weak areas um, how many do I have and that'll give you a sense for you know how much time effort do I, I think I need to, to put in uh, review the content outline um, I've definitely talked to people that haven't really you know paid that much attention to the the content outline they just know that you know it's expansive and, and covers a lot of clinical topics well they actually give you an outline uh, to go off of and I think if you go through those things and use that as a way uh, to recognize which areas you're, you're good at, which areas you need to work at more. I think that's super, super important. Now, in, in my study material that I've got uh, on my website, I used the BCPS content outline to try to create study material. Um, so I think that's the challenge with, with other things is, you know, maybe they, they get into things that aren't necessarily, um, on the BCPS content outline. So keep in mind, they can change it, you know, from year to year. I haven't noticed any changes over the last few years, as far as the, the content outline goes, not any significant changes anyway. Um, but before the, the year you're going to take it or the, the testing period you're going to take it, look at that content outline and make sure you've got a sense for, for what's going on there. Uh, find some ways to, to gauge progress, you know, materials, topics, um, you know, creating a checklist as to things that you feel like you're proficient in, a good way to um, kind of gauge, gauge that, that progress. Um, practice questions can really um, help tip you off as far as um, areas of, of weakness. Uh, so if you have, you know, str struggling with diabetes questions, if you're struggling with, you know, maybe a, acute care, neuromuscular blockade agents, maybe that's something you don't do very often, you know, that's a, a good example there of where practice questions can really uh, tease that out and, and help you identify those areas. When to start studying, uh, I kind of block it off in, in three different segments, six months, four months, and two months. Um, my recommendation is probably in that four-month ballpark. Um, uh, again, this you know depends upon the person. If you did really well in school and like I said, did well on final exams where you were comprehensively tested, you're, you're a good test taker, maybe you can get by with two months. That, that, that might be fine. Um, but, you know, if you want to err on the side of caution, I, I would say four to six months is um, probably a, a better route to go. Now, with that said, if you've got uh, two months off from work where you're not doing anything and you've got hours and hours and hours to be able to study, well, yeah, then that definitely, you know, changes the discussion a little bit and two months might be a reasonable uh, time frame there. So just kind of different time periods. If you've been out of school for, for quite a while, I would um, maybe lean on the, the higher end, the four to six month range. Again, if, if you've, you know, recently gotten out of school, um, you know, maybe done residency, maybe had a lot of really good uh, clinical experiences, uh, you might be, you know, ready in, in as short as two to three months without any, any difficulty there. So, again, kind of learning and learning about yourself and recognizing uh, how good you are at studying and taking uh, exams. Uh, test day success. So just a, a reminder about um, the exam itself. So currently it's 175 questions and 
the time allowed is just over uh, four hours, okay? So you should, in my mind, it's very helpful to do a practice exam, at least it is for me, and you want to time it out so that you're taking no more than one to two minutes per question, okay? So you got to make sure that you have enough time to finish the exam. You have to have to finish that exam, okay? So again, this kind of comes down to knowing yourself. It comes down to practice. You know, are you a fast test taker? If you're a fast test taker, you're probably not going to have too much trouble. Um, with that said, I, I considered myself probably a, a, a fast test taker. Um, but it had been a while, so I, I think I was a, a little bit rusty when I got in there to, to take my exam. And I think I only had probably um, 15 to 20 minutes to spare. And again, I, I consider myself a, a relatively uh, efficient test taker. So uh, those practice questions, if you're nervous about that, can be super, super helpful as well as um, identifying, you know, kind of your weaknesses and stuff too. So um, format, multiple choice. A, B, C, D, so pretty straightforward. Um, generic names are used on the exam as well, so you, you don't need to really worry about um, too many, you know, old, old um, brand drug names, for example, there. So that's a little bit about the exam itself, just to give you a little more comfort. Uh, as far as preparation, studying, um, Statistics, uh, I think if you've looked anything on, on, on BCPS um, and kind of getting prepared for it, you, you got to recognize that within the uh, content outline is a significant chunk of statistics questions. Okay, So I would definitely, um, you, you know, maybe allocate of your study time, maybe allocate, you know, 15 to 20 percent of your time in that that range so for every you know hour uh, for every five hours of studying you know maybe you do an hour every six hours of studying maybe you do an hour of of statistics same thing with regular don't do not forget about regulatory issues it's a significant portion of the content outline again go look at that content outline make sure you're um, well aware that regulatory questions are um, going to be significant as well. Uh, weaknesses, I would target, um, you know, and this, this really depends upon how many weaknesses y you feel you have. Um, you know, targeting that, that 30 to 40 percent of your study time range, I think, is a good number to shoot for. Uh, if you feel like, you know, the majority, you know, half the topics are weaknesses for you, um, for whatever reason, maybe you work in a, a highly specialized area, um, you know, then maybe you bump that up to, you know, 50 to 70, 50 to 60 percent of your time on, on weaknesses and do, you know, quick reviews of, of your well-known topics, um, you know, in that 10 to 10 to 20 percent range. So um, what you do every day you know, is likely going to be something you're comfortable with and you're probably not going to get those questions wrong lightly, likely. So just a, a quick review of those topics that you um, know pretty well or you feel know, you know pretty well, uh, I, I think should be sufficient. What to focus on? So uh, clinical, I'll talk a little bit that on the, the breakdown on the next slide. I uh, mentioned statistics, regulatory. Um, you know, I, I've, I've got some study material on some of that stuff um, to kind of help give you a sense of, of what's in there. Um, you know, regulatory, I think of Joint Commission, um, CMS, Medicare, Medicaid, you know, different things of, of that nature that uh, impact pharmacy practice. Uh, statistics, you know, I, I think of drug literature. So, you know, pick up an article and, and you know, kind of look at it, see what things are in there, and those type of things, um, questions regarding those types of things will will likely uh, come up on the BCPS exam. Uh, avoid studying, uh, you know, like compounding, something that might come up on the NAPLEX. Um, 
you know, uh, real in-depth dosing calculations, um, law questions, you know, what to do in this situation if you're, you know, uh, if the pharmacy starts on fire, uh, that's not what the pharmacotherapy certification is about. Pharmacotherapy certification is really about the best selection using clinical judgment and um, maximizing benefits and safety from the, the use of, of medications, okay? So compounding questions, law questions, things like that that you may see on an Aplex type exam, um, it likely not going to show up on, on BCPS. And again, I refer you back to that content outline. Uh, as far as getting in depth, you know, and, and studying topics, uh, just going to kind of give you a few examples here of, of what to focus on. Um, kind of my best advice would be to, you know, target big things in highly specialized areas. Okay, so think about like oncology. Okay, there's a, a an oncology uh, certification that, that pharmacists can get. Okay, it's a really, really specialized thing. So what I would do is is primarily focus on studying um, adverse reactions, uh, things of, of that nature, you know, maybe boxed warnings, things that are, are really um, clinically important, um, but maybe not so specialized as the, you know, what uh, drug therapy would you use in, you know, stage three prostate cancer versus stage for prostate cancer, okay? So, so differentiating between those categories, I mean, that's, that's something you'd probably see on a specialized exam. But if you're talking about, you know, using chemotherapy such as taxanes, you know, understanding what adverse effect profile these um, chemotherapy agents have and, you know, what we do to help manage those side effects, that's kind of the, the, what I'm getting at when I mean the, the bigger things in those, those specialized areas. Um, I would study more in depth on topics that are really, really common. So, you know, good examples, you know, diabetes, CHF, you know, psych, maybe antidepressants, um, meds that are used, you know, all day, every day in patients for chronic disease management for really common conditions, there's where I would, you know, definitely go into more depth and maybe, you know, for instance, taking um, psych or diabetes, for example, knowing the, the subtleties of, of each medication kind of within a class, you know, I think of SSRIs, you know, which SSRI is more sedating, which ones have more drug interactions, uh, things of, of that nature, um, where you, you need to have a little more depth, a little more clinical clarity on what's important in those really, really common disease states. So hopefully that, that kind of gives you a little sense of, of my study process. So in really specialized, small areas, focus on the big things, um, more in depth, um, you know, common topics, uh, definitely dig in to those areas um, deeper. Uh, take home, huge exam. You know, nearly 150 topics are listed uh, in the, the content outline. Okay, and that doesn't include stats and, and regulatory. So what that tells me is there's only 175 questions. Okay, so there are some topics that are, you know, likely not going to be covered, you know, because, you know, some of the, the bigger topics they, you know, might ask two, three, four questions on, such as, you know, diabetes and CHF and psych issues and things that, like I mentioned, like that. Um, so, again, they, they can't test everything in, a, in such a, a, a big, big exam. Um, it, it makes it really, really uh, challenging to, to study. Um, after stats and, and regulatory, definitely start with the, the big things, you know, drugs, drugs of choice, um, you know, first, second, third line options, any sort of guidelines, um, recognizing what they are, um, 
and selection of those medications. Um, when we've got patients on medications, being able to kind of recognize adverse drug reactions, boxed warnings, uh, major drug interactions, kind of those classic examples of drugs um, that have interactions. You know, I think of uh, lithium, amiodarone, um, you know, 3A4 medications, those type of things. Um, you're definitely going to want to try to know inside and out because, um, you know, certainly those are, are fair game and a, a clinical pharmacist should um, should know a significant chunk of those things as well. Um, monitoring parameters, you know, looking at labs and, and trends and changes um, in association with managing um, medications. Uh, maybe some some pharmacokinetics you know is is something that you might touch on you know briefly as well um, I would say that know the the big things with pharmacokinetics kind of understanding you know half-life and, and different basics like that also meds that you know have really unique uh, pharmacokinetics you know phenytoin is just a, a hallmark example um, of a medication that you know, a clinical pharmacist definitely should understand um, uh, something like that. Uh, just a few take-home points. So um, don't focus too hard on, on dosing of, of uncommon drugs. Again, you know, focus on the, the really um, big things, especially uh, when you're first initially studying. And then you can kind of hammer into to smaller areas if you feel uh, necessary. Um, memorizing a, a lot of unique e equations. Uh, again, you know, I said 150 topics um, are in that ballpark. Close to that are on the content outline. So, uh, again, you know, I, I think, you know, s memorizing some of those equations and stuff, um, some, some really basic ones like, you know, half-life or things of that nature, um, just having a, a good uh, sense and being able to recognize some of those things is important. But as far as, you know, straight memorizing uh, equations, um, it's not something I would spend a, a lot of time doing. Uh, diagnosing patients, you know, uh, that's not something we, we do as, as pharmacists. So, you know, I, I wouldn't spend a lot of time focusing on that. Um, and again, you know, don't, uh, don't get too wound up if, if you fail this exam. There's a huge um, population of pharmacists that um, have uh, failed the exam for sure. So don't get discouraged and uh, keep going, keep moving forward. Uh, I do have uh, study material, uh, BCPS study material, uh, geriatric pharmacist exam as well as the AMCARE exam at this time. Uh, just go to meded101.com. You can um, kind of check out uh, what I have. I'm trying to continually update and, and um, yeah, provide new resources as, as people uh, kind of request. Um, so, again, feel free to, to check that out. Um, you can also uh, drop me an email, mededucation101 at gmail.com as well. Uh, if any uh, questions come up there as well. Thanks for watching, and um, yeah, feel free to, to reach or leave a, a comment below if you found this helpful at all.